everybody and welcome back to Musings by Nikki. Today we are going to build a cover for our journal. Now, um, I will say that sometimes some people's process, and I've gotten this comment in the past, is to that they build the cover first and um, that they always start from there and they sew their signatures in and decorate that way. And to that, I say, that's awesome. Go ahead and do you if that's what works for you. Um, my process, as we have discussed before, is to de design and decorate my signatures because I love to do a lot of sewing and it is way easier to pull one page off and do sewing rather than trying to, you know, or, or it just basically limits that you can't do any sewing once you've already sewn everything in. Like you can't use your machine on any pages because that would be impossible if they were already sewn into a, a book. Um, anyway, so I always make my signatures first. Plus, so let's just take a look at the difference between this side and this side. <laughs> so... Um, this book, and this is nothing, you know, like honestly, when I set them down here, this side is a lot lower than this side, but it is not nearly as alligator mouthed as some books get. So I find that, hold on, it's early and I'm still having my morning coffee because it's going to be a wicked hot one here today. And, uh, I need to turn on my AC in my little studio here and so it gets a little noisy so I'm trying to quick film this morning plus I have to go to take joy to physical therapy in a minute but anyway um if if I build the book cover first and then decorate I have a greater chance of underestimating how thick my spine needs to be in order to accommodate how alligator mouthy I make the signatures so I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by being able to do it now and being able to m match the spine width to how alligator mouthy my signatures are. That's why I like building my cover at the end. Plus, I just feel like it's kind of the last thing that pulls everything together. And sometimes the direction that I end up going in my books is different from where I started. So where I end up with my signatures is a little different and then that means I want to make my cover a little different. So um, anyway, all that said, one more sip of coffee and let's go through some of the supplies I've got out. I've got my signatures, of course, because we're going to use these to measure. These are my fully designed, fully decorated signatures. They are good to go as they are. Then, in order to build the actual, like, cover itself, and we're going to build it, like, from scratch, you can definitely use, like, recycle old book covers. So I've got one, like, here I've got some um, old Reader's Digests. You can just cut the book block out and then repurpose this. If you don't like the way it looks, you can, you know, cover it with cloth the way we're going to do that. Certainly, I have done that plenty of times. This will not match the size of the signature I need because um, the Reader's Digests tend to be like more of a 5 by 7 size. Anyway, so you're going to need a couple pieces of book board. These are ones that I just order from Amazon. However, you can get these off of one of the... Um, I built the covers already and... Um, I'm not going to show you though because you'll see them in the flip through video, but um, for the signatures, the single signatures, and one of those I got off the back of a um, legal pad. So like off the back of a legal pad, there's usually that heavier cardboard. I always save those. Any sort of um, paper pads or anything, even the 12 by 12s, the front and back cover, I save all of those because they make great flexible covers covered with uh, you know, fabric and you can usually sew right through that. So that's kind of cool. Today I'm using a <clears throat> medium weight, so it's still pretty flexible. <coughs> Excuse me. My voice is still warming up today. It's still pretty flexible. It's like a medium weight book board. I'm not too worried, even though I want it to be a hard cover. I, I have heavy, heavy, like extra heavy duty weight book board as well, but I'm not super worried because we're going to cover this in velvet, which is going to, that's a pretty substantial fabric and it's going to add a lot of 
um, like weight and stability to the book board. So I'm not super worried. So I've got two full size, you know, well, full size, they're eight and a half by 11, I believe is how they come. Yeah. So they're standard American size, letter size, eight and a half by 11. So two, I've got two sheets of that. Then I also have tons of cutoff pieces from when we cut these down, you'll see I'll end up with extras. So I've got tons of cutoff pieces in my bin over there. And um, I just grabbed out a couple that I am going to show you uh, how I figure out the width of the spine. So save all your extra pieces <clears throat> because you can use those as spines. And then I have a piece of Tyvek which is literally the stuff here in the U.S. I'm not sure if this is everywhere, but here in the U.S., this is the stuff that we wrap our houses in before we put siding or anything on. Um, so if you have a, you know, husband or a son or somebody, daughter that's in uh, construction and you want to get them to give you a slice off the giant roll, hey, you'd have enough for a long time. Or you could go on Amazon and order Tyvek. And what it is, is, well, I'm not entirely sure. It's like a fiber, um, it's like, fi I don't know if it's fiberglass or what it's made out of. If you can see through it, can you see through it? Kinda. Anyway, it's it's a really super strong, um, fibrous paper that you cannot tear. So uh, you cannot tear this stuff. It's pretty indestructible. It's hard, long wearing, and so this is going to make a very durable book cover because I like our book covers to be strong. I want them to you know last the life of the book. Also, we're going to need some adhesive. This is my favorite. This is neutral pH adhesive. It is PVA glue. Um, and this one dries clear and it stays flexible. So you, um, this one's archi archival quality. So this one is really great because it doesn't have all the acid and whatever in it. So uh, again, when we're doing this application where we want it to be strong, yet uh, last the test of time. This glue I have found by Lineco and you can, uh, works really well for that. And I get this big bottle on Amazon and it um, lasts for quite a while because you don't need a ton of it. This is what I do. I don't, it says to shake it up. I don't like shaking it up because it gets all kinds of bubbles in it. So before I use it, I just give it a little spin like it's, you know, on the drum. Anyway, uh, so we're going to need that. And then a paintbrush. Um, I like this one is about as wide as I like to go because I like to be able to, well, I'll show you, get, you know, certain sections without having like a super big wide brush. So um, I feel like this size, which is probably about an inch. Yeah, it's about an inch. That gives me the best control. This is my brush that I have been using for glue for a long time. It's just a super cheap brush from uh, yeah, something made in China. Super cheap brush, but it works really, really well. As long as you clean your brushes out, they should stay good for a while. You're going to need some binder clips. I've got these big giant ones. These are two inch, yeah, two inch binder clips. You're going to need four of those. Then you're going to need some waxed linen thread, or you can use embroidery floss, or you can use um, twine or string. I mean, you can bind your book with just about anything, but this is specifically made for book binding. It is a uh, linen thread that has been run through wax. So you can see I can like bend it and it will take the shape of what I've bent it to kind of because it's got wax on it. And um, the wax does a couple of things. It helps it the life of the the thread. Uh, but it also, when you tie your signature, the wax on there kind of like pulls that knot together and keeps that knot super tight for a long, long, long time. So your binding is going to last a long time. I'm using purple because, I mean, look at how fun, right? And we're binding in this light pink velvet and I'm going to bind through the spine. Oh, I don't know I've, if I've decided or not. On the other ones, I bound through the spine and the, the color looks really cute. So we'll make that decision when we get there, but we're going to use this bright purple. And then we're also going to attach our 
lovely tassel that we made. And so in order to do that, we're going to put an eyelet through the spine of the, the top of the spine of the book. And so um, if you want to do that, you can certainly put your tassel on a bulldog clip and just clip it on and that makes it easily removable. This is still removable. It's just um, gonna be a little bit different, that's all. And so uh, I have an eyelet setter here, my crocodile. it punches the hole and sets the eyelet. And then I've got my eyelets here. So we've got that at hand as well. All right, so those are the supplies. You know, you'll need scissors. I've got my fabric scissors and my regular scissors. I've got my um, bone folder, but this is actually a Teflon folder because we'll need to put some creases in a little bit later. You can use anything for that. You don't even have to put the creases in. <clears throat> and yeah, that's it. Okay, so let's get to... First, we've got to, first thing we had to do is cut down our front and back covers. So what I do is take my signature. Now, I know these are eight and a half by 11 um, papers that I folded in half, but I just always check anyway, and I want to measure. I'm just using my glass cutting mat here to measure. My cutting mat is gross. You probably can't tell that, but there's glue all over it because I've been doing this. I don't bother. Um cleaning it until I get all the glue. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to measure. So I'm at roughly to the end of my signature, um, like the end of my papers is about five and a half, but I've got all these fluffies and I don't want my book cover to stop short. So I usually go an extra quarter of an inch, um, but I want these to stick out past the edge of the book. That's what I'm trying to do, accomplish here. So um, I'm at five and a half and I'm going to go to five and three quarters. I'm also taking into um, account that wrapped velvet around the edge is going to add a little bit of um, additional edging here. You know, the velvet will because it's got a little bit of pile. And so uh, take that into consideration too. If you're wrapping it in paper, your paper will basically stop at the edge of this. Paper's not thick enough to make, you know, add any additional anything to the edge of your book page or cover. But fabric will do that, especially a, a fabric like velvet, which is, or upholstery fabric, which is heavier duty. And that when it wraps around, it's just gonna add some bulk there. So that is a very minute detail, but it's something to keep in to account. And you know, when you're doing this, you wanna, hone your skills and make each one better than the last. That's my goal at least. So five and three quarters is what I want to go out. So I am going to literally write that on my board because otherwise I will do this all and forget and then have be like, what did I say guys? And then I'm going to measure the spine side, which comes to no surprise, eight and a half. So I'm going to add now we're splitting the difference, not just between, you know, like on this way, your spine comes right up to the edge and then has to, you have to account for where it's going to stick out on this side. How far do you want it to stick out, right? This is what I'm talking. Do you want it to end right at your page? Do you want it to cover up most of that? You know, where do you want it? If you make it go, I will say this. For, first of all, this video is not for you if you've done this a bunch of times. I'm talking to the people that have really never tried to do this or that just want to hear my process on it. So I'm going to talk a lot and describe all of my thoughts on this. If this is not what you're looking for, you can click off and go watch something else today. You know, sorry, I don't want to waste anybody's time. But if you've never done this before or you've done it and you didn't like the results or whatever, this is the video for you. So. Um, when I'm talking about how far to cut it to measure, if you cut it like this, it'll come right to the edge of your pages so you can still see them. If you go way past it, here's the only problem with this. Now you've got this space. Now you've got all this space here, which it's hard to see with my tabs on there. But you've got this extra space, and it's like a you know half inch here. The, the problem with that, the only problem with that, and that's fine if, you, if that's what you want. The only problem with it is if you put a tie around your book at the end to keep it closed, it will start to pull these two edges where it goes past the paper. It'll start to pull them kind of together. And so it will start to push your edge of your book down like this, especially where the tie is, unless you've used 
super strong book board. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so now we're going this way. We need to measure how tall to make it, right? How tall to make our book board. And my signature is exactly eight and a half which is no shock because that's the size of the paper I was using, but you wanna split the difference. So if I just go an extra half inch, or I mean a quarter of an inch, you need to split the difference of that extra quarter inch between top and bottom. So if that's all I wanna do, then that is fine. If you wanna add a whole half inch, then you get an, a whole quarter of an inch on both ends. It's up to you. I'm just gonna go with eight and three quarters because um, I'll just bind really carefully and make sure that my book board just comes right past the edge of my signatures. That's kind of the look that I'm going for. So I know I need to make my book boards eight and three quarters by five and three quarters. That's why I have two sheets of it. I can't cut that out of eight and a half by 11. Um, sadly, I'm going to end up with extra pieces, but that's okay. That's why I save all of that and I will use it to um, make smaller book covers. So let's open up my guide here. Five and three quarters. Oh, just kidding. This is, I have done this so many times, you guys. I just go with my first measurement and then realize I can't get eight and three quarters this way because it's only eight and a half. Duh. I have to do my long measurement this way. So I want to do eight and three quarters. There, see, do as I, this is why we're saying all the things. I go back and forth and press down quite a bit. Even on this medium weight book board, it doesn't like to get all the way through. Sometimes I'll just snap it off. I'm gonna see if I can run it through one more time on the back side here. There we go. Now this is what I'm saying, save this piece because this is a potential spine for a future book. So we did, um, and it has our measurements on it. So we've got eight, eight and three quarters this way. So this is eight and three quarters, and now I want five and three quarters this way. All right, there's our first court, uh, first cover. I'm gonna cut the other one down. All right, guys, we've got our two uh, covers. And then let me, I'll bring that back out in a second. I'm gonna put these scraps away so I don't mistake them. Um, now we've got to decide how wide we want our spine. And this is where I'm gonna give you another hint here or a tip on this. Um, this is where I get all my signatures and I want to show you something, and I don't know exactly how I'm going to show you this, but this, <laughs> I'll, I'll try my best. This is a two inch spine. So this is one that I've, cu I've cut previously for some reason, and it was in there. And this one is two and a half inches. So they're just a half inch difference, but that makes a huge difference when we're talking spine width. So what I'm going to show you is what I used to do is lay my signatures down, put my board up here and go, okay, yeah, that totally gives me a little extra room there for the hinge, awesome, on my spine side. So what I'm gonna see if I can, yeah, okay, I can show you, right? So see when I hold this two inch spine up to my, um, this end, even when they spread out a little bit when I'm standing them up now, I go, that looks about right. However, when I take this two inch spine over to this side, look at how much extra there is on both sides of that spine. We're gonna end up with, if we bound with this, we're gonna end up with an alligator mouth 
for sure. And it's going to be a fairly dramatic one. But if I take the two and a half inch spine, when I lay it down, I go, oh my gosh, look at all that extra space. That's way too big, right? That's what I'm thinking when I do this. I go, oh my gosh, that's like, like if I scoot it over, there's all kinds of extra space. Who needs a big spine like that? However, when I hold it by this side, and I put it up against here. Now look, that looks like we're gonna end up with a lot less of an alligator mouse situation because that spine will hold the majority of the width here. I don't mind a little bit of alligator mouth. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's you know when you've got this end bound in really tight and see how this looks like a crocodile mouth? Right? Head, teeth, mouth. <laughs> so um, I don't mind it being a little bit wide open on that end, but I don't want it to where it's like, you know, the book covers like this and, you know, you can barely get it to shut. And then you have to put a tie closure on just to keep the thing shut. Um, that's all for you all to do. Like when if you buy one of these books and you take it home and fill it full of stuff and tie that thing shut. Hey, that makes me happy. I want to give you room to work with, you know. So we're going to go with the wider spine. Um, sometimes what I will do is take the spine like this. I will put a mark here where I think, you know, where the signatures seem to fall um, the, on the binding edge. And then I'll come over here. So if I'm using, you know, a full sheet like this and trying to decide, then I'll come over here and put another mark and then kind of look between the two marks to figure out where I want to go with it. In this case, I know I want the two and a half inch spine. I'm going to put my signatures back over here because we're not going to need them for a while. And then this one is 11 inches long, which is, you know, way too long. So we're going to get this guy back out and go down to eight and three quarters, which is the height of our covers. All right, we've got our book covers. I've got this little extra bit here. I'm gonna peel this off. That's from my cutting edge thing there. Okay, now we've got our three pieces. Look at that. It's like the beginning of a book. Now we need to reinforce the spine with some tie back. Um, you can use fabric for this if you don't have tie back. Um, you can use, I mean, there's a lot of things you can use. I've got this little, uh, I think it's like a teeny weeny mini paint roller tray. And this is where I put my glue. It works really well because then I can rest my brush here and I don't get glue everywhere because I get glue everywhere. It's just what I do. Um, I'm going to show you, we're going to put some of this in. All right, I never put more. I, I used to just pour a bunch out thinking I was gonna use a bunch and now I try to not do that. Um, now I'm gonna just, you could go this way with your tie back. The only thing is, is it doesn't reach all the way to the top and I like to have the full, um, I like to have the, the full width of the hinge covered in tie back. <clears throat> We'll end up cutting the excess off the top and the bottom, um, but this is, I prefer the full length, like height of the hinge to be covered with the tie back. I just don't want these exposed ends down here, you know, without any on there. Plus, you really just need, this is for the hinges, it's not for out here necessarily. I mean, it does make the bookboard a little thicker, but, you know. Um, so what I'm going to do is take my pen again. Now I am going to measure these extra pieces that we cut off here. I'm going to use them to put the spacing in between. You know, that was a bad example. But I am just eyeballing right now to get this glued down. So I'm just kind of going like this and I'm going to go to the top and the bottom and about midland. This we know will get fully covered in glue and then I'm going to do the same thing here, here, and here. That way I just know how far to go when I'm painting the glue on so I don't, you know, make a big gluey mess. Now 
I'm just gonna start applying the glue. You want an even coat, but uh, also you don't want to put on too much because, I mean, it will slide right around on the Tyvek because the Tyvek is like an impermeable pretty much thing. So you don't, you know, need a huge layer of glue on here. The book board will absorb most of it. It'll just bind with the, you know, it'll make a bond with the Tyvek and you'll have this nice strengthened hinge. So there we go. It's not a super thick. I feel like it's just about right. And then I am just going to um, go like this and line it up. This does not have to be perfect, guys, because we're going to come back and, um, you know, cut off the excess. So this, is, this isn't going to be seen by anybody. These are the inner workings of the book that you will just know in your head that you did and that it's there and that you feel good about its strength over the long haul. But no one will ever get to appreciate your craftsmanship here. So if it's a little sloppy and you've written on everything, it's no big deal because no one will ever see this part. More coffee. All right, now we're going to apply the spine piece. And um, what I'm gonna do is paint, paint the glue onto this thing fully. All right, and now in order to space this, I'm gonna use a piece that is, we cut off and put it right up against the edge and then push this right up against it and that will give us a nice I'm just kind of eyeballing down here and I'll show you that in a second it is kind of nice on the Tyvek there we go when I pull it out look at that I have a nice uniform hinge size and then I'll take this down to the bottom and just make sure that it squares up on top and bottom but this becomes kind of a multi-tool and it does slide around on the Tyvek just slightly. So you want to make sure, you know, that if you're moving it around that you've re, there we go. And I'm just going to hold it in place for a second. But this, this is a nice trick. I saw it on someone's channel. I don't even remember who, but um, this gives you this nice even spacing, which is awesome. All right. Now I look like I've overshot maybe. Let me see. Well, what am I doing? Oh no, I'm good. All right, I'm gonna put my glue on this side. All right, now I'm gonna get my spacer again and get this last cover on. And like I said, it's kind of nice because you can slide your book board around on the Tyvek just slightly for a few seconds while it is tacky. So you can get it exactly how you want. Okay, I think I'm good there. Oh, you guys, we're getting a book cover made. All right, so while that is drying, I, I would not recommend like, you know, my, my heart's desire is to flip this thing over and rub the Tyvek side down. Um, however, because the Tyvek is slippery and non-porous, this still slides around for a little while. And I want that glue to really grab so that I can keep my, um, hinges the same width. So I would suggest just letting it set you know, you can press down from the top. This is a time where if you really, you know, if you had a bunch of time, you could take a big book and just lay it over this whole thing and it would make it a nice flat dry. Give it a couple hours. Um, this, this glue does dry fairly quickly. Um, it helps that book board is very porous. Our next step is to get rid of the extra. You could fold it up and over, but that would 
hinder our ability to make creases in fabric if you want to. So I, and I, plus I just don't think it needs that because by the time we cover this in fabric, it's going to be so strong from the tie back on the inside that'll protect the hinges and then the fabric on the outside that's really going to um you know do what we need it to do so i've just got my little craft knife and i'm gonna follow right along the edge here and cut off my excess Oop. I think I'm hitting the edge of my board because I'm trying to do it away from me. My book board, I mean. There we go. Okay, there's my extra piece. Don't need it. Yeah, there. I was just carving a little cardboard off there. Then I'm going to do the same over here. That got a little wild. Let's go back in and go right along the edge of the book board. There we go. <gasps> Guys, look at that. Okay. So we want to, I think that's probably grabbed good. That's got a little, what is that doing there? It's probably, I probably ripped it off while I was trying to um, <laughs> cut the edge off. This is a gluey mess. If you are a messy crafter, this is, you know, you're going to get glue. So I can feel dampness through the Tyvek, but it's not, um, there's not glue coming through it. You can feel dampness, but it's not glue. So anyway, you're going to want to let this dry for a while because we want this to be nice and dry by the time we start applying fabric to it. Um, but I can show you, look at that, we have our basic, we have our basic book cover, and let's get out, so I've got my fabric, whoops, just kidding, hold on a sec, okay, I thought I was going crazy and I couldn't find my extra piece of velvet. So this is this gorgeous, lovely pink velvet that I found, I believe, at Hobby Lobby on sale. Um, here's a pro tip. <laughs> if, if you are using velvet, you are definitely going to want a lint roller because the, there is going to be chronic little fluffy bits and pieces of lint. Look at all that. Um, and the minute we start cutting this, we're going to end up with more of them. And I tell you, that's the last thing you want. Uh, velvet is not a super forgiving fabric. As thick as it is, you would think it would be more. But because of the sheen that it's got, um, if there were little lumps underneath this from a bunch of clumpy little pieces of velvet scrap, if there were lumps when we glue this down, you're going to see because the sheen will reflect that. Look at when I just give it even a little bit. See how you can see the light reflecting off of the stuff? I'm barely moving it. So anyway, you're going to want a lint roller or some masking tape or something to just, you know, I mean, they're going to be scraps, but it's whatever. You just want to make sure you get a majority of them off. Okay, you want a piece of fabric that's big enough um, before we even start cutting it down that will give you um, uh, like at least an inch on every side of the book. Okay, so I'm going to go with this one here and uh, we're going to glue it down. And then I am going to put this under a heavy book to dry completely and then we'll come back to the next step but I through the magic of film I'm going to go to physical therapy with joy and do all kinds of things <laughs> so here's what I like to do I'm going to start with the spine first so that's where I'm going to glue first I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to paint completely the spine um, if you are using a thinner fabric the the nice thing about upholstery fabric that's what this velvet is, is it's a velvet upholstery fabric. The nice thing about it is it's really thick. And so um, it's, you know, the glue lines are not going to show through as long as you get a nice even spread of the glue and you don't go 
too heavy handed with the glue. Um, but you want it to be all the way up to the edges. And then for this first piece, we're going to want to go like this, flex the, the hinge and make sure we get some glue all the way down on all the edges and that little bit of Tyvek that peeks through. And I'll show you why we do that in a minute. Um, but if you're using a thinner, like a cotton or a broadcloth kind of thing, or like a calico print, a quilting print, something super cute like that, that's totally legit. I definitely use that to cover books as well. Um, you're just going to want to make sure you don't go very heavy with the glue because it will s certainly show through the book. Um, all right. So now I'm just going to, I am just eyeballing this. I just need at least an inch around. Okay, so I'm going to press that down from this side. And then I'm going to carefully flip it over and press it down here. And then this is where my um, tool comes in. I am going to find that hinge and press the fabric down into that. See how you can kind of see the line there? And I'm going to do the same on this other side. And now with the fabric, because of the pile on it and because of its thickness, you're not necessarily going to end up with these nice crisp lines and see that so much. It's just my habit of doing it. On the other books that I made, you really can't see it because of the direction of the pile and stuff. <laughs> you just don't see it very much. But um, I'm going to keep pressing down and giving that fabric a nice adhere. But if you do this with um, a thinner cloth, you will for sure see this nice crisp line. And when you fold it, if you look at another book, when you fold it, you'll see that little edge there. And that's kind of what we're creating here. This is definitely not a step that you have to do. It has nothing to do with the structure of the book. I think it does give a little space to the hinge, to the fabric on the hinge, so it doesn't um, wear that, these, you know, the fabric out on the hinge as fast, but this is definitely not, you know, like this is not integral to the structure of the book. This is just a preference for me. And then I'm gonna just make sure I press it into the edges up there. This is why you want a nice, this is why you wouldn't wanna just apply glue, you know, from a bottle for this because if I did that even if I get a whole lot of glue on there look at this this is like a felt I can I can show you because of the velvet even if you get a bunch on there there's still all these areas where there's no glue that you're not going to get full adhesion and on most things when you're doing journals that's fine but when you're building the cover of the book which is the thing that's going to get the most wear it's the thing that's gonna, um, you know, protect all the lovelies inside of it, you really wanna make sure that everything gets a nice full adhesion. So that's why painting it on with a paintbrush really is the best bet. All right, now that feels pretty good. I don't see any glue seeping through, which means I had a nice even coat, but not too thick. And the creases are staying down in there, which means that I've pressed them in enough that they've adhered to the edges of things. I'm using the flat part of my bone folder to do this. So now I'm gonna flip back this cover just to where it, you know, has been glued obviously. And I'm gonna start painting on the glue for this cover. And I take my brush when it's just a little wet and kind of go under the edge here. If you go too heavy with this part, you'll end up smashing too much glue down in there. And then of course you'll get glue bleed through. And that is what we're trying to avoid. I have certainly done glue bleed through. Sometimes I do it on purpose because it, it acts as a resist. And if I'm gonna put some ink or something on the front cover, then the glue acts like a resist and it kind of gives you a cool thing. I've definitely done that on purpose. I probably did it as a mistake first and then I was like shoot and then I was trying to fix my mistake and realized it acts like a resist and then you know went with it and then did it on purpose. Um, but yeah you, you don't in general unless you're planning to do something funky like that. You just don't need a bunch of glue leaking through your fabric. You want to see the beautiful fabric you've chosen. And this is your first impression of your journal. 
you know, your front cover, your cover of your book. Okay, so again, I'm just trying to get nice and even, nice and even. I am painting all over my board. That is fine because it is a glass board and it wipes off really easily and it's already filthy. So there. I'm going to just pull it back over and smooth away from the spine. And I can already see the edge take shape. That's because it's, a, you know, the full adhesion of the glue. I'll use my thing. You could use a brayer. I've got that over here. You could certainly use that to push it down. If you are um, using a thinner fabric, again, I would be careful with how much actual pressure you're putting on because this could certainly cause the glue to seep through if you're pushing down and putting too much pressure on. So I would certainly go with, uh, you know, your hand or whatever. Just, I like to make sure all the way up to the edges, all the way along the edges. Now we're gonna do the same thing over on this side. Uh, book cover covered uh, you know nice and secured on the front now we are going to cut down here and again I'm eyeballing about an inch of space on all edges I'm going to cut around that All right, and now we need to do a couple of things to miter corners, okay? Um, at this point, you might feel your board starting to curl, all right, or do weird things. Don't worry, it's gonna stay wet for a little while. Depending on how thick your board was, you're going to get some certain amount of curling. That's why once we get these folded over, um, I'm gonna stick this thing under a heavy book and let it dry completely, and that will keep it very flat. So. Um, we'll get to that point. Now we're going to cut off the corners. I don't want to go right up to the edge. I'm going to go slightly because I want to leave enough to let it cover over itself. See how I left just a little bit? I'm going to do that to all four corners. All right, now because of this thick fabric, the other thing I need to do is because on the outside of my spine, I already have a thick layer. And then on the inside, I'm gonna have a thick layer. And that's gonna make between the book board, the Tyvek and this velvet, that's gonna make the inside of this be real hard to fold when it's bulky like this. So what I'm gonna do is I can see my lines here, but you know what, I'll just draw them on so you can actually see them. I can see them just because of the folds, you know, the shadows, but there's the edges of my spine. So what I'm gonna do is not cutting all the way up. I'm gonna cut about this far. Can you see that? I'm gonna cut in about that far and I'm gonna take just a tiny little wedge snip out of there and I'm gonna use my little tiny fabric shears here and I'm just cutting a little bitty wedge. See that? Just a little notch out of there. And um, that's just gonna help us have less bulk in that fold. Otherwise, it's gonna be difficult to you know, close the hinge. It's gonna wanna stand open on its own. So I'm gonna do the same on this side. You don't wanna go all the way up to the edge of the book, otherwise you will see that when we, um, unless you really cover the inside of this thing. All right, now we are ready to just put glue along the edges. I like to do the top and bottom edge first. 
and then the sides at the end which is where we'll be mitering the corners and that makes it's a little more manageable when it's just the side instead of this whole long edge but I'm going to give it a nice coat of glue all the way to the corners to the edge along the edge and right along this edge here <clears throat> and then I'm going to rather than folding it up all of which I do sometimes I'm going to take this whole thing and just give it a nice crisp fold over to catch it and it just I feel like it makes the edges even I don't know that's just maybe in my head and then I'm gonna you know make sure that I'm getting a nice even edge here's another opportunity for bleed through if you have put way too much glue on or if you've put too much glue over the edge here you are uh you know and you're using a thinner fabric you're going to get little blisters of glue coming in along the edge that is fine they you know it's on the edge of the book so it sometimes i think well maybe it even adds a little protection but you know you don't you can wipe them down and just get them to as minimal as possible um but what you do want to do is make sure that you're pulling up with your thumb here to make sure you're getting a nice crisp edge and then pushing your fabric down into the glue. And I can see now that where the hinge is, I've got some, there's a little tiny bit of bulk down in the corner, but that's fine. That will, this right here will be able to close just fine. Okay. I'm going to do the same on all the other sides. point where we're going to fold the edges up and if you've done your cut off the edge then you should end up with this nice little mitered corner here like so if you've cut too close you're going to end up with the cardboard poking through and if you've not cut enough you're going to end up with some bulk um, so you know it's just adjust as you go always cut less you know uh, cut further away at first because you can always cut more off but you can't add right that's my theory on most things <laughs> even measuring wood and I like to put a lot of glue I'm a little heavy-handed with the glue down into this corner especially with this velvet because if there's any little bit of the edge the raw edge of the fabric it's just gonna keep on you know uh, shedding 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 so I'm being a little heavy handed right down into that corner. That's okay. Again, this time I'm not going to fold the whole thing over. I am just going to work it with my fingers. Um, the other nice thing is, is I had planned on putting metal book corners onto this one. So you don't have to be as exact because the metal book corners will totally cover it up. However, it's good practice to make it look nice. And I just use my fingers to really just make that corner look as best as I can. And there we go. There is my corner made. I'm going to do the other side. is our cover covered and um, my desire at this point is always to take it and look at it and flip it around and close it and do all the things look at how nice and neat that looks and the velvet feels scrumptious however uh, playing with this at this point is bad idea we want it to dry nice and flat I used to think I needed to fold it to get these things ready but actually 
they are much better off drying flat and then being folded and I'll show you how I kind of work the cover around to make it nice and flexible but um, it is much better at this point to dry flat so I'm I've got a huge book it's like a big old dictionary and it's over here on the floor I'm gonna put this down on the carpet and then um, because it's old nasty carpet in this room so don't worry I'm not glue on it is whatever probably a benefit um, anyway, uh, I'm going to put this down. You could certainly not put it on the carpet. You could put it on a hard surface on your desk or whatever, but that way it's out of my way. Hire, and then put the big heavy book and I'm going to give it a few hours. In the meantime, I'm going to go to physical therapy and do some things and live my life. And then we will come back in part two where I will show you how I cover the middle. We will sew in the signatures and put the eyelet in and do all of that. Okay, so this is part one. We will come back for part two. Um, that'll just be probably the next day because I'm going to film this this afternoon. So um, thanks guys for joining me today. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you don't think I'm an exorbitant chatty talker. Well, I am. It's okay if you think that because that's who I am. Um, but I, I hope that you found some helpful tips or hints. I find even though I have made hundreds of these, there are still things that I'm perfecting or doing or changing or, you know, whatever. It's there's there's always something to learn. Always. I just think that about life in general. So thanks for joining me, guys. I will see you in part two shortly. I hope that you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or maybe if it's middle of the night on whatever side of this wonderful planet of ours that we all share wherever you live. Hope that you're having a good one. And until I see you guys next time, take care. Stay safe. And God bless you. Bye, everybody.